Okay, welcome back to part three. This test strip's now been dipped into a negative control solution to uh, demonstrate how the test runs. And you'll see in the central flattened area um, the pink dye travelling towards the handle end. This is an osmotic process, it's absorbed into the area where you've dipped it into the urine sample and then sucked along the line of the test strip and it will go through that central zone and when you see this dark control line forming I'm going to just point that out to you with the uh, marker here this is the control line that is forming quite clearly now and darkly towards the handle end that indicates that su su sufficient urine has been added to the test strip and that the membrane has run fully to the control area now what you'll see developing here, nearer the dipped end, is the test line forming. And you'll see that at this time, you've still got a pink discoloration on the background of this uh, area for the results, and that the test line is significantly lighter than the control line. That still indicates negative uh, detection of cannabis at 25 nanograms. Now what we'll see over the course of the next couple of minutes is that pink dye fading, the uh, window where the results and control line are forming will widen and the test line itself is likely to darken further than this and the read time for these tests is between 5 and a maximum of 10 minutes. But for experienced testers that are doing this day in day out, once they've got a clear control line and they're familiar with the test line forming in that area and they can read that you've got both a test line and a control line clearly uh, discernible they would interpret that as a clear negative result and move on to the next sample for testing. So there is actually no requirement to wait for the full development time other than in positive tests where no test line is forming. Now we're going to talk to you now about the advantage of screening down to 25 nanograms over 50 nanograms. We're constantly being pushed in terms of why have they determined a 50 nanogram cutoff for cannabis. Why can't you screen lower than that? Uh, because it's an illicit drug, there's no acceptable level. It's not like with uh, other tests where you have to determine what a significant level is before you'll consider the result positive. With cannabis, particularly with the introduction of roadside testing now, which we would draw your attention to at this time as a saliva-based test as opposed to urine, but people still want to be absolutely certain that if they have had exposure to cannabis that they're not going to be picked up on a roadside test. So the emphasis in this commercial environment is for suppliers to introduce more sensitive tests to meet that demand. Now the difference between a 25 nanogram screen and a 50 nanogram is obviously that this one will detect cannabis for a slightly extended period of time after exposure compared to the 50 nanogram. So after the 50 nanogram level's been breached in the urine sample and a standard test will give you a negative result, there'll be a period of time over which the concentration in urine will be somewhere between 25 and 50 and this membrane will still give you an indication that cannabis is being excreted from your system. Once it drops below 25 nanograms, this test will then give you a negative result. The important emphasis is to ensure you understand that at that level you are still excreting cannabis and that that could still be detected with a more sensitive test but the consequences for that would be that cannabis would be detected at the lower level and there can be no argument that it would still be having a pharmacological effect or an effect on the brain in terms of its uh, drug effects centrally. So this test allows people to do a screen to the lower level. The extension in the time period over which this test will detect cannabis still and give a positive result has not yet been determined in studies. So we're still having to quote a time after exposure that will be considerably variable depending on the duration that cannabis has been consumed and the concentrations and uh, sensitivity will, will basically vary anything from between three to five days as an average up to a maximum of 
30 days after heavy sustained use. So the advice in terms of the time window for detection still has to be very vague despite the sensitivity being increased on this test because the unknown quantity is the cannabinoids that have been absorbed and potentially laid down in fat surrounding the body and then gradually excreted through the urine. So I hope that explains a little bit in terms of the advantages and disadvantages of this test membrane. The other big question that we're asked regularly is does this pick up or have the ability to pick up passive smoking, passive inhalation? Again, the definitive studies on that at 25 nanogram have not been done. But equally, when you compare that to the saliva test being done roadside now, there are no studies that we're aware of that say a screen at 10 nanograms or 12 nanograms will exclude recent or immediate passive inhalation. Simply hasn't been done. The only study that we're aware of that has been looked at was one done by the US Navy many years ago where they basically excluded 50 nanogram urine screens as being potentially positive on the basis of passive inhalation. So there you have it, the new all test ultra cannabis dip test available from UK drug testing. Uh, it's available in single tests and packs of 50 for uh, professional and business users. If we just show you again this result window now while we've been talking, completely cleared, lovely pale background, nice clean, easy to read, control line and a test line, clear negative result on the negative control solution this test has been run on. Thank you.